Memory usage is probably one of the most important things to understand to be able to make Photoshop run faster on your machine. What you need to know is that Photoshop is a 64-bit native application, so it can handle as much memory as you have space for in your computer. And more RAM will help you to work with large images or several documents open or hundreds of layers or camera raw files. So whenever you really use intense things like uh, HDR merging images or using uh, animation or 3D features and processing videos, then you should definitely invest into more RAM in your computer. First of all, how can you check how much memory you have? If you are a Mac user, you can go to About This Mac and that will tell you I have 16 gigabyte RAM in my computer. That's quite good, but obviously that's not the highest you can have. It really depends on your computer, but generally I would say anything above 4 gigabyte will be good to work with. If you can afford to have more than 10 gigabyte, I mean like 12 or 16 gigabytes, then that's even better you will feel the improvement in Photoshop and in all other Adobe applications as well. Uh, it will be appreciated if you have more RAM. If we go to the preferences and performance, we will be actually able to see how much RAM is available for Photoshop to use. By default, it will be set to 70%. You can increase or decrease this value and uh, you can go above or below the ideal range as well if you want. But remember that these changes will only take effect after you restart Photoshop. Increasing this value is probably the most effective way to accelerate Photoshop. The other very important option in the Preference Performance tab is Scratch Disks. So when you run out of RAM on your computer, Disks will take on the workload. So these are your scratch disks. By default, it is set to use your boot partition, which already handles all your installed applications and the operating system. So it might be advisable to add all your available hard drives as scratch disks. And most importantly, you should prioritize your scratch disks with these arrows here. So I have an additional hard drive with more than half a terabyte of free space. So I'm going to add that to the scratch disks, select it, and then I put it on the top. So that means Photoshop now will use that first and only when that uh, is finished or completely filled with uh, the information by Photoshop, then it will go on to the next drive, the Macintosh HD, which is my boot partition. It's good to know the difference between solid state drive or SSD and hard disk drive or HDD. The solid state drive is much more expensive, but it's much faster than the traditional hard disk drives. And also it's good to know that internal drives are much better and faster to use uh, as scratch disks as external drives. But in case of using external drives, make sure you use USB 3 instead of using USB 2. Of course, only in case you have the option to choose from these two. At the bottom of the document window, you will find the status bar. And if you click on this little arrow, you will find an option called efficiency. Once you select this, it will tell you with the percentage, the efficiency of Photoshop. That's very interesting. So it can tell you how smoothly it can run with the currently open documents and the layers that you have. So we can test this by just resizing this image to a huge size. Of course, it is going to use the interpolation method um, of Photoshop because whenever you work with raster images, you won't be able to um, create good quality images in a higher size. It will always be a guessing game and Photoshop will try to guess the new pixels that has to be created for a higher resolution image. So I'm just going to change the width to, let's say, 10,000. So that's a huge image. You can see the really the loss in quality. So if I click and hold on to the preview image, that shows me the original pixel details uh, Photoshop has to work with. And when I let go, that shows what it's going to do with those pixels. So as you can see, it tries to blend them together. And that's not really a good 
thing because we will lose the quality on the image so we can check that on any detail we can see it here on the horse uh, head as well so on the edges you can see the stair stepping is going to be blended so it tries to smooth the, the details out now of course in case you are resizing it's better to use the preserved details which is actually a new feature in Photoshop CC you can see already how much better it will look on the edges so that was the um, bicubic sharper and this is the preserved detail so that looks already much better and we even have an option called reduce noise which tries to keep everything nice and soft while resizing the image so that does a so much better job than the other interpolations but it still won't give us a perfect quality so we can see that was before and this is after and our original file size was 5 megabytes and the new one will be almost 200 megabytes so that's a huge image if I click on OK we will uh, be able to have a look at the efficiency here at the bottom and uh, it actually works on this change so it's the image size or resizing progress is running so we can see that the efficiency still didn't drop it's still 100 percent which is quite good so we can always make a selection of this image maybe and copy it so I just go to edit and copy and then we can maybe create a new layer and paste that in the efficiency is still fine if I continue pasting this in, now after a while the efficiency will start dropping. But then again, because Photoshop wrote all these details onto a scratch disk or into the RAM, again the efficiency went back to 100%. So when you throw big images to calculate and, and very complicated things to Photoshop, it will take some time to again get back to 100% efficiency. But if you have enough time and you have enough RAM and scratch disks, then it will most of the time be able to get back to the 100% or full efficiency. It might be a good idea to reduce the number of layers and smart objects to help improve efficiency. But of course, that is with the expense of a more destructive workflow. Once again, back in the Preferences Performance tab, we have the History and Cache options. The cache stores low resolution version of the image you have open in Photoshop to be able to quickly redraw them. So there are eight different cache states from one to eight that you can change to. And what you need to know about them is that the more cache levels you have, the slower Photoshop opens files but the faster it will work once they are open. So once again, make sure you understand this. The more cache levels you have, the slower Photoshop opens files, but the faster it will work once they are open. And you can also choose between these presets, the tall and thin, or big and flat, and default. And default is probably the most useful one because it will strike that balance between uh, the uh, fast loading documents and also uh, fast workflow with them but in case you work with smaller images but with lots of layers then you should use tall and thin and most of the time this is great for web design or user interface design projects while big and flat uh, is good if you work with large images with few layers Again, I would say digital painting and photo retouch are good examples for the big and flat workflow. I prefer to keep this on default, but in case I paint in Photoshop, I usually use the big and flat. And if I work uh, on a user interface or web design project, I would use the tall and thin. Remember also to restart Photoshop after you change these settings, because it will only take effect once you restart it. And there's also an option here, the history state, which can actually set all the way up to 1000 or down to one. And of course, if you increase the number of history states that will degrade the performance of Photoshop, and you can actually reduce this down to five 
or 10 or something like that, even 20 might be a lot if you do everything non-destructively. So if you've been following me here on Touch Plus and you learn from me, you probably know that you should do everything on masks, adjustment layers and smart objects. And if you use these features, then you will be able to change whatever you want easily without the need of using history states. So I actually prefer to use a lower history state, but in case you are painting, for example, you probably need around 100 states to be able to go back and forth between brush strokes. So this is again up to your preference and the type of work you do with Photoshop. Reducing the image resolution can be useful also to make Photoshop run faster and just to add effects much quicker because it's good to consider the destination of your file before you start working on it in Photoshop. So in case you want to add a very complicated filter for example before you actually add that, you should decide what is the actual file size you need at the end. So if your final result will go on the web and it will only need to be like 600 pixels wide, then before you do anything, you should go into the image size dialog box and there you can change the values. So you can set it to 600. And uh, in this case, I would use Bicubic Sharper because that's better for reduction. Then if I click on OK, now I can start working with the image and I can start applying filters because now it will run much faster than with the original bigger resolution. I probably don't have to mention this because it's quite self-explanatory, but you should always close unnecessary documents. So first of all, just to uh, avoid clutter and having so many things here open on the top, or especially if you don't use the tabs and you have images open like this, you might end up having a mess in Photoshop and hard to find which document you want to work with. So first of all, avoid that clutter. And also secondly, because it will slow down Photoshop. So if you have loads of documents open, again, your efficiency will drop. There are two options that can affect the performance of Photoshop under the file handling preferences and they are the save in background and the auto save options. Save in background is very useful because if you work on big files you can actually continue working while Photoshop is saving. So you will be able to see a progress bar here on the status bar showing the saving process but while it's saving your image, you can actually continue working. So that's quite useful, but it can again reduce the efficiency of Photoshop. So if you turn that off, it might be faster to work with uh, all the options, but you will have to keep waiting for each time you save. So you won't be able to do anything while you are saving a file. And if you turn off save in background, you won't be able to use the auto save option. So it has to be turned on to be able to use that as well. And once again, with the automatically save recovery information, we'll actually use your scratch disks. And if you don't have much space on your scratch disks, then it might be also a useful thing to turn this off or maybe just set it to a um, higher interval. So just reduce the frequency of, its, uh, of saving. In case you are very afraid of losing any of your work, you can set it also down to five minutes. So it will auto save every five minutes. But generally what I would recommend is to just get used to pressing Command S or Control S all the time, whenever you wish to save your document. Almost after every change that I know is useful, I press the keyboard shortcut for saving the document. So if you have that routine yourself, you might not need this option and you can turn this off both with the saving background and that will again help you to improve the performance of Photoshop. There's another thing you can use to make Photoshop run faster while you're working in Photoshop and that's the edit purge options. With this, you can actually get rid of anything that you have in your uh, clipboard or also in the history. So if you go into the history panel, you can see whatever you apply to the image. I made some changes here, like 
flipping the canvas and then I use the clone stamp to get rid of some details. So I can always go back to the original state or any of these states. And of course, keeping these history states needs some space on my scratch disk and also it will reduce the efficiency of Photoshop. So in case I would like to get rid of these, I can just go to edit, purge, histories. Or if I also have something on my clipboard, I can just choose all. So what's the clipboard? If I make a selection and I copy that and I paste it to somewhere, it will still be on my clipboard. So Photoshop will keep that there and I will be able to use it again and again until it's purged from the clipboard. In case it's a huge file and you made a big selection and copied that, your clipboard will actually hold like a whole document and that definitely slows down uh, Photoshop so it's good to purge these things so if you go to edit purge all that will tell you that this cannot be undone if I click on OK I can see in my history now I won't be able to go back of course I still have the open state of my document just for safety that's always there and I can go back to that if I want to Another way to improve the performance is to turn off the thumbnails in the layers, channels and paths panels. You can do this under the panel menus, panel options. Here you can choose none and that won't show you a preview of each of your layers. It will only give you a little icon indication. So this can actually make Photoshop run faster, especially if you have lots of layers. And if you are organized, and name your layers and group them together and maybe use the filtering options here in the layers panel, then you probably won't need these images anyway. So it's just a luxury to have, but if it's more important for you to make Photoshop run faster, then you should turn these previews off. And last but not least, it's also very important to keep an eye on the document size which again, something you can choose from the status bar. So here you can select document size. Currently this document is around six megabytes. So if I create a duplicate layer, for example, by pressing Command J or Control J, that will increase the file size to twice as big as the original. If I again duplicate it, it will keep on increasing the size. So this number on the left will always tell me what the file can be saved into if it's flattened, which you can do from the drop down in the layers panel. So there's flatten image, which will get rid of all the layers, merge them all into one. And the one on the right is showing the actual size with all these layers together. So one tip from me would be to make sure you don't duplicate layers only when it's very necessary. And instead of duplicating layers, try to use adjustment layers. So in case, for example, you want to keep an original color version and a grayscale version, instead of creating a duplicate layer and applying, let's say, desaturate on that, and then just have these two layers, you can improve Photoshop's performance if you just keep the original color layer and instead of using a destructive adjustment, use the adjustment layers so go to adjustments panel and choose black and white adjustment. You can see that won't increase the file size at all or hardly any difference. And it still gives you the possibility to turn that off to see the original colored image or to turn it back on and see again the black and white version. So using your layers wisely is again another very important factor to be able to make Photoshop run faster. And just so you know, you can find a couple of useful options under the file scripts, particularly the delete all empty layers, flatten all layer effects and flatten all masks. So instead of flattening your whole document, still keeping all the layers, you can clean up the mess if you have loads of layers, like getting rid of quickly all your empty layers will again uh, reduce the file size and also flattening layer effects and the flattening the masks can save you file size. So that's again a very useful thing to do, especially if you have loads of layers and you work with big image sizes. And that's all I wanted to show you in this tutorial. 
Hopefully these tips and techniques will help you to make Photoshop run faster. And remember, if you want to learn more about Photoshop, make sure you join me next time as well here on Tuts Plus. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.